Please note that the following editorial contains spoilers for the game Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. Hello, I'm Cosmic and today I wanted to talk a little bit about storytelling. Now, storytelling itself has made major leaps forward in the past 20 plus years. The art of storytelling has made striving innovations in all ranges of media from books to films. Video games as a medium has presented storytellers with the ability to enable people to have unprecedented levels of interactivity with a story. There have been some fantastic, truly immersive stories in video games, but in terms of storytelling, the industry has only just started to scratch the surface of the potential that lays within. Video game storytelling has for the most part been very traditional. Video games have tried to adopt a more film-based way of telling a story with devices like cutscenes and simple lines upon lines of text. For more games than I can count, the game's story and the game's gameplay have been separate entities. Only recently have game creators come to the realisation that the appeal of an interactive medium is just that, it's interactive. People don't play video games to watch a film, they play video games to interact with larger than life characters, environments and stories. Barring the few games and game genres that don't require a good story to be enjoyed, developers and publishers often look to both graphics and gameplay to overcompensate for any lack of real narrative. The thing is, graphics improve immersion and the visual experience, but they don't hold attention. Good gameplay is essential to any video game on an objective level, but it doesn't give the player purpose. Many games are still created with the ideas of the mechanics first and the story second. This means instead of crafting a solid, uncompromising story, the story is often created to fit around the game's mechanics. It can lead to the story being becoming disjointed or even worse, totally pointless. Creators are still trying to tell their stories as films would. They have you sitting there watching cinematic after cinematic, cutscene after cutscene. What's the point? If I wanted to watch a story be told to me, I would go to the movies. However, there are those who are beginning to realise something. Story-driven games need to be built around the story and not the other way around. One of my favourite games of last year was a story-driven adventure game titled Brothers The Tale of Two Sons. Now, Brothers was designed to be an interactive story experience. Instead of telling you the story, you lived the story as you played the game. You simultaneously controlled two brothers with each thumbstick on a controller and the controller triggers also caused the respective brother to interact with the game world such as an NPC or an object. The right hand side of the controller was the for the younger brother and the left hand side of the controller was for the older brother. So the game starts and you see that the younger brother is afraid of water. This is because he previously watched his mother drown. The brother's surviving parent takes ill and then they, they are basically instructed to venture forth and gather a remedy which you later find out is from the water of a world tree. Oh and did I mention that you have to figure this all out without one single line of real dialogue? Similar to the game Sims, the characters in the game don't speak a real language. Everything in the game is told through expression and interaction. By having the two brothers overcome their various obstacles, by helping each other in the game, for example having the older brother carry the younger brother through water due to his phobia, you develop a real connection to these characters. Not only because of the game's visuals and character expression, but because of the way the controls work. Each trial, each obstacle is a journey for both you and the two brothers. You're not spoon-fed what to do. If you reach a failure state in the game, the game does not then help you. It does not give you hints, you just have to figure it out. The game wants to engage you on an interactive level. The creators don't want you sitting back and just watching the screen. They want your brain to engage with the game and thus creating immersion not just through story but through the controls and the mechanics of the gameplay as well. Brothers packs an emotional heavy punch. It's not just due to the story, but the emotional impact is enhanced due to the controls and the mechanics. As you reach the world tree, and almost completing your epic quest, the older brother is severely injured, and he cannot make the climb up to the top of the world tree. You take control of the younger brother solely, and you climb the tree. When you return, you find that the older brother has succumbed to his injuries. Not only do you feel the pain of the younger brother now having lost both his mother and brother, but you ha then have to bury him. There's not just a cinematic, there's no implication that he buried him. You as the player then must deal with the situation. You must dig the grave, 
you must drag the brother's body into the grave and bury the brother. On top of this, the entire left of the controller is now dead. This makes you feel the loss as the player and it translates the loss of the brother in a very real way. Then something happens. What I would describe as the most emotional button press of 2013. As you near your home, rushing still tried to save your father and get back in time, you, mu you come across and you must cross a pool of water. There is absolutely no way around this. You walk up to the pool of water and nothing happens. You press the right trigger for the younger brother's interaction button and he does nothing but shake his head and sob. It's night, it's lightning ridden, it's stormy weather, it's pissing down with rain and you near the edge of the water. Right trigger doesn't work, then you press it. Whether you mean to or not, whether you're just trying to make the game work and trying to figure it out, you end up pressing the dead side, the Lost Brothers trigger button. You still feel the loss of him only just minutes ago and suddenly a whirlwind of emotional music and the spirit dead voice of the dead brother echoes through the speakers and the boy begins to swim. Now I'm going to tell you right now, I did not have a single dry eye in that moment. Through a blend of story and the controls, you feel that moment hit home more powerfully than you would if you had just sat and watched it. The game's interactive design connects you to the story in a way only a video game can. I'm not saying traditional storytelling is dead or defunct or a bad way of telling stories. What I am saying is that creators need to realise the interactivity part of this interactive medium is a huge part. This is why people play video games. They need to find new ways of incorporating and innovating a blend between mechanics, controls and storytelling. Only by combining these elements and making them have great synergy can you achieve something that no other form of media can achieve. A video game story, if well presented and engaging and interactive, can resonate with someone more than any film, any piece of music and any book can. The interactive part of the medium is one of the most important parts and it is something that is heavily still overlooked. And it is time now and I'm glad that many, many, many developers are starting to come to the realisation of this, is that people want to engage with the stories. It doesn't matter if it's not a choice based story, you can have a set ending, but it's how you get there, it's the interactivity of it. By interacting with this story, you can make it become your own, even if it's a set story. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, subscribe and leave a comment and I'll see you next time.